What's up you guys, welcome back and welcome if you're new. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys just exactly how I installed my Dial Dynamics SS3 Pods uh, light bar. As you guys can tell, it's super custom and it's super crazy bright. I'll show you guys, of course, at the end of the video. So if you guys are interested on how I installed this and how I built it out, make sure to stay tuned and watch the whole thing. Let's get it. All right, you guys, so before we actually get started, I'm gonna explain to you guys on what you're gonna need to actually accomplish this install. So it's gonna be pretty straightforward, but it is gonna take some time. So if you guys are curious on it, I'll explain exactly how. So if you guys do have a printer roof rack, that's what you guys are going to need. The second thing you guys are gonna need is gonna be a light bar cutout on your guys' actual uh, windscreen like this. So the one that I do have currently does not have it. That's why I needed to go ahead and purchase a new one, which is what I have right here. So uh, once you get those two things down up next you're gonna have to choose kind of what lighting combination you're gonna want so that's looking right here so as far as for me I do have two pros in white right here of diode dynamics ss3s and then I have two max ss3s so as you guys can tell I have those in white I'll explain to you guys why in a minute and then looking right here I have six sport ss3s the reason why I did that is because when I do go to install it on the truck I'll explain to you guys really quick this is pretty much gonna be the orientation I'm going to have it so to be something like this so as you guys can tell I do have the white ones on the outer side and then I put the yellow ones in the interior side the reason why I did that is just because I wanted to have a dual a light bar basically so the maxes I'll be having on the outside since those are gonna be the brightest the pros will be right here in the center and then all the yellow ones will be the sports so it's gonna be awesome I still haven't figured out if I'm going to be doing it all in one connection or what I'm thinking of doing is probably connecting two harnesses one to the yellows and then one to the whites just so that I have two switches being able to you know go back and forth if I wanted to the next thing you're gonna need as far as uh, adding this in is you're gonna need to get some of these diode dynamic splitters so I did get a couple of these so I hope this is enough which we'll find out if not I'll go ahead and make some wire and just get it done that way next thing you're gonna need is gonna be the harnesses so I do have some diode dynamics harnesses right here I have uh, two and the reason why is because how I was explaining one harness I'm gonna be using for the yellows and then one harness I'll be using for the white the next thing you're gonna need are gonna be the brackets the brackets do come provided inside the boxes so don't worry about that that's all provided so now that I showed you guys this let's go ahead and start the process I'll go ahead and uninstall parts of my Prince roof rack to go ahead and get this started and show you guys how it is let's do it So now that we've installed the new windscreen and we put also the wind reduction uh, trim right there, so it looks freaking awesome. Can't wait to show you guys once it's installed onto the truck. Up next, what we ended up doing is kind of laying everything out. So as you guys can tell, we have the lights out. Uh, we have the crossbar here. We have all the brackets that came provided with the lights and the hardware. So one thing I did want to let you guys know, inside the hardware baggie that comes provided, it does come with everything that we're gonna need, but one thing. So inside of here, if you see this big bolt, which is this here, we're not gonna be using that big bolt reason why is because it won't attach into the rack right here so you're gonna notice it's not gonna slide in so what we ended up doing is we had to go to Lowe's to go ahead and pick up some smaller ones which those will freely slide in and that's where this brackets gonna go attached and then of course your pod so I'll show you how to do that right now I just wanted to explain that you're gonna need to pick up some of these so as far as for me since I do have 10 pods I had to pick up 10 of these 10 lock washers, 10 washers, and 10 nuts. So it's actually really cheap to buy this, so don't worry about the price. I just went to my local Lowe's and picked all that up. So up next, what we're gonna be doing is we're now gonna go ahead and start sliding in the screws, so that way we can kind of see where we're gonna place them exactly. So let's go ahead and uh, crack this open and get going. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab all these, and I'm just gonna slide them in for now. All right, you guys, so of course, and now that I told you guys about the screws, so I already put my 10 screws in the channel uh, one thing you do want to notice is you want to make sure to put it on the skinny end like this 
You don't want to put them in between these two, uh, this fatter end, because that's actually the roof part of it. Where you're going to want to put the screws is going to be on the side of the crossbar, just like that. So on the skinny end. So once you have those into place, I just somewhat put them where they're going to somewhat go. I still got to align them. Up next, we're going to be working on the brackets and the hardware. So uh, first things first, on the pod, let me show you guys what's the bottom, what's the top. So facing it to the back, you're going to notice that's where the plug is going to go. You always want that plug to be facing downwards. If it's facing like this upwards, that's going to be incorrect. So it has to be downwards. So just imagine it when you go to install it onto the truck, how that plug's going to be sitting. It has to be downwards. So now that we accomplished that, up next, we're going to grab the bracket. The bracket has to be in this position here. So as you can tell, that's the bottom. And then this like lip piece has to be facing front towards the light. So that way you guys get the orientation of how these things go. So up next, what we're gonna do is grab our hardware baggie. And like I was telling you guys, the big bolt, the big nut, the big uh, lock washer and washer, those we will not be using. So I'm gonna put these off to the side. So all we're left with is gonna be this here, which is two little washers, two little screws, and two little nuts. So what you wanna do first is you wanna go ahead and grab the nylon nut, and you're gonna insert it inside. You want to make sure that the nylon, as you guys can see the white in there, that's the nylon. You wanna make sure that's pointing inwards towards the light. And I will be honest, um, this part may be a little hard depending on how big your hands are because these things are tiny. Now you wanna get a screw and put the washer right in. And get the other screw and put the washer right in. So once you have it into that place, now you wanna get your bracket, align the holes, go ahead and grab the screw and screw it right in. This step here, you don't wanna tighten it down all the way. You just wanna make sure that it's not gonna fall off. So just leave it nice and loose, do the rest. You can tell it's still loose and it's in its orientation. So when you go to install it on the rack, it's you're gonna notice right here, there is a hole and that's gonna go insert it into that there. And then that's where your washer, lock washer, and nut will go. It'd be washer, lock washer, and your nut, just like that. So you wanna make sure it's loose to where you can still move everything. So let me go ahead and finish this up and then we'll align everything uh, to the corresponding hole on the actual windscreen here. So that way all the, all the pods are within this area. Once we get all that down, we can go ahead and tighten it and then we'll put it onto the roof and start with the wiring. All right, you guys, so of course, now I have everything kind of set up. As you guys can tell, I still have everything loose. All of these are loose, but they're somewhat in their place where they're gonna be going. So uh, we, we need to be able to fit all these lights within the light bar cutout. So what I'm going to be doing up next is I'm going to reinstall this onto my Prince roof rack and then we'll go ahead and install the crossbar and we'll start maneuvering everything around. We'll tighten the stuff down and then of course uh, from there we'll wire it up. Before we do that though, what you're going to want to go ahead and do just to make your life a little easier is go ahead and flip these on its side. What you're going to want to do in this step is I might as well uh, just go ahead and start connecting the splitter harnesses. It'll make it a little easier than tightening everything down and trying to connect the harness up on the roof. So that's what I'm going to do right now. And then after that, uh, we'll go ahead and move on to the next step, which like I said, we'll be reinstalling all this and measuring everything out. But the way these bad boys work is they're super simple. Um, all they really do is you connect one, connects into another one, and then this one, you put another splitter onto it, connect, connect, and it's just kind of like a chain harness is what it is. So now that everything is installed, as you guys can tell, it looks freaking awesome. One thing I did want to tell you guys, if you do remember in the center, we do have yellow. Yellow's gonna have its own harness and then the whites on the outer part are gonna have their own harness. So it's gonna be awesome. I'm gonna do, of course, now the wiring, which I'll show you guys. I just wanted to explain that. One thing I still need to do as well is kind of even them out a little bit better uh, because they are spread out a little uh, unevenly right now, but it still looks great overall. So let's go ahead and now get into the harness. All right, you guys, so now that we have everything installed on the truck up next of course it's going to be the wiring as i just explained to you guys up top we are going to need two wiring harnesses as far as for my application since i do want to split the light bar in half if you guys don't want to do that 
just get one light bar harness it should just be plug and play with those adapters that I showed you guys in the beginning and you guys will be done uh, now another thing I did want to explain to you guys um, if you guys do get the Diodynamics uh, harnesses like I have here those are literally just plug and play and then you're gonna have a, a switch which is right here an on and off switch that switch is gonna need to be ran into the cab and then you're gonna have a fuse as you guys can tell and you're gonna have a red connected to that fuse and then a black the red one is gonna go to the positive of the battery and then the black one is gonna go to the negative of the battery or you could ground it off somewhere it's also gonna have a relay here as far as for me I'm not gonna be utilizing this specific harness uh, I'm gonna explain to you guys why all I'm gonna be using is I'm gonna cut it right about here I'm gonna be using this uh, plug-and-play connector that way I can connect it into the light bar that I have up top and then from there I'm gonna tie it off onto this right here which is a 16 gauge uh, wire so the reason why I'm doing it this way is because for my application I do have a switch panel installed so I don't need a relay I don't need a fuse and I don't need all this extra stuff like the switch all I literally need off of this harness is just this connector here and then the rest I can utilize my own harness that's why in, uh, if you guys have ever talked to me or anything like that I always recommend getting a switch panel because it makes all the lighting installs so much easier as far as for the other uh, section of the light bar it'll be the same step another thing that I do recommend you guys get if you guys do ever run a light bar doesn't matter if it's this one specifically just any light bar that you have to run wires down into your engine bay is get one of these bad boys from KC uh, this is basically a wire hider it just makes it a lot cleaner you guys will see when we install it so now starting with everything so I'm gonna show you guys kind of what's what I'm gonna need um, some wire splicers I'm gonna need some wire cutters I'm gonna be using some heat shrink uh, with some terminal connectors also gonna be using a heat gun so everything's just nice and clean overall so let's get this process started so like I said first things first is I need to cut this here so now that we got this process started as you guys can tell uh, this one does actually have uh, three the reason why is because the pods that I do have have a backlight I'm not gonna be utilizing that feature so what I'm gonna be doing is I'm literally just going to chop it off because like I said I'm not gonna be utilizing it that's just the backlight feature and I don't need to use it so the ones that I'm gonna be focusing on are gonna be right here which is the red which is a positive and the black one which is a negative so now that we have this exposed I'm gonna go ahead and get my wire strippers here and we're gonna go ahead and strip these open and then we'll get started on wiring up the harness all right you guys so now that I have this spliced open as you guys can tell I did the same with this one and I'll do the same with this so now that we have it spliced open like I was telling you guys uh, black is negative a red is positive same thing here so we're gonna just match up the colors uh, before I do that though I'm gonna put some sheathing over it so that way it heat shrinks nice and clean once we're done with this install and then up next we'll go ahead and uh, grab the corresponding uh, terminal heat shrinks and since we are going to be using 14 gauge wire for this application it's going to be the black one so I'm going to be grabbing the blacks right here it just goes right over you want to make sure it's in the center because that's where this uh, connector is and then same thing with this one so I want to make sure it goes in the center and once it's there once you have it crimped down now you can go ahead and get your heat gun and just heat it away Once one is done and it's cooled down, let's go ahead and now do the same thing with the other side. All right, you guys, so now we finished up one of the harnesses. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys, so come closer. So as you can tell, like I was saying, uh, we're gonna be using 14 gauge wire for this application. Uh, so th this right here, I ended up using black tape as well. So let me go ahead and explain what I did. So I ended up grabbing one of these bad boys here, uh, inserted it for the wires on each one, as you guys saw on the camera. And then up next, what I ended up doing is I ended up grabbing some heat shrink, one for one side one for the other just so it's nice and clean underneath and then just at least for me I know this doesn't look too clean when you add this type of tape but for me I wanted to do this since it is going to be on the roof and it's going to get exposed to heat it's going to get exposed to the sun and all that stuff I didn't want anything to melt and over time just kind of get you know really bad so I added this uh, black tape just to go ahead and give it that extra strength so nothing goes wrong as far as the wiring so we're basically done all we need to do now is measure out how much wire we're going to need which is what I'm going to do right now and then once I finish that up we'll get started on the next wiring harness which is for the white pods but it's going to be the same exact steps so I might not show you guys that because like I said it's the same exact steps that I just did right now after that at nighttime we'll go ahead and show you guys how it looks so if you guys do want to buy it it'll be in the description box below so as far as the wiring harness it's all done it's all wired up so now all we got to do is just plug it into the light bar uh, so what I did is I actually pre 
measured. So I measured from the light bar all the way to where my switch panel is gonna be connected to. Uh, so this is good enough length. So let's go ahead and uh, check it out, you guys. So coming right over here, you're gonna notice there's the plug, which is gonna be connected to the actual light bar. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide it underneath the print suit through here. As you guys can tell, it fits right under. And then it should come up right about right here. So as you guys can tell, so this one's gonna connect into this right here. It's a nice plug and play, just like that. Super simple, nothing hard about it. Uh, so up next, what we're gonna be doing is noticing right here, uh, I did use a KC wire harness for the white ones. So this isn't gonna be a plug and play. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and chop it from here. I'm gonna get my pre-measured wire for that one. And we're basically gonna do the same thing just without the plug and play. So I'm gonna cut it and then we'll go ahead and match the red with the red and the black with the black. And then we'll run it to the switch panel. Uh, I was kind of hoping I could have done this plug and play. It would have been a lot cleaner, especially whenever I do wanna remove the light bar, just plug it off. Uh, but that's fine, it's not a big deal. Uh, just like I said, I really wish I could have done a plug and play like I did with these. Uh, so let's go ahead and now hook up the white ones and then we'll show you guys at night how these bad boys look. Do you want to go ahead and get yourself a KC wire hider? Uh, reason why is because you're going to have wires, of course, coming down your windshield, and this acts kind of like as a seal. There's actually a rubber, which is this here, and there's a cutout in the center. So that's where your wires will basically pass through. So it'll make it a little bit cleaner. I have this on the other side since I do also have uh, rack lights on the side of the truck. So this made it a lot cleaner. So that's what I'm going to be doing right now. So inside, you're going to get yourself your KC wire hider. It's going to also come with the alcohol pad to go ahead and clean down uh, your windshield or the back of this to make it nice and clean. And it's also gonna come with the 3M double-sided tape. It's super easy to install it. You just go ahead and flip it on its backside, which is right here. You're gonna notice it has like a groove where that tape would actually fit. So you can't mess this up. So once you figure that out, you go ahead and peel it off and you start sticking it. Like I said, after you've cleaned off the surface. So once you have that double-sided tape on the back of it like this, now you wanna go ahead and put it on. So it literally doesn't matter the way you put it, but since on the opposite side, I already have it in one way, um, I'll go ahead and just kind of keep that same line. So let's uh, start with sticking it on. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the bottom. So as you guys can tell, the flap here, I have it fa facing towards the outside. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this bottom section here, which is the cowl and i'm gonna slide it in a little bit once it's there i'll go ahead and start sticking it and make sure to just place it correctly because this will only adhere once if you start moving it around the sticky will not stick after uh, so you want to make sure to put it in the correct position the first time so just give it some more firm pressure make sure that thing's not going to go anywhere um, as you guys can tell it basically looks the same as your uh, seal that's already there so it kind of blends in and that's why i was saying it's best to just buy one of these bad boys here that way you don't have wires just kind of hanging down so these are kind of thick i'll be honest so they're not going to fit slightly too well in there uh, this is kind of meant just for one wire uh, so mines might look a little funny but that's fine i don't mind it that's how i have the other side so now all what you do is you go ahead and open up the seal and then you just stick the wires in it and once you have them stick all the way then you can go ahead and close it back together just to show you guys as you can tell now it just looks like a regular windshield seal so it looks super clean so up next now we have all this excess wire so i got to open up the hood and then run the wiring to the switch panel which is what i'm doing next as you can tell the wires are coming out through here uh right in this section here let me show you right about here there's a pin you could go ahead and get a flathead screwdriver unpop it tuck the wire through there pop it back in and once the wires are through then you can tell uh, they're right here so here's the two wires uh, from the harness so all I have to do now is uh, zip tie it to that existing harness that's there from the truck I'm gonna zip tie it all the way and the switch panel is there so let's do that next all the wirings now tucked away it looks factory it's all nice and clean I use zip ties and it looks super nice so as you can tell so now we're setting over here so I have it spliced open now so one is for one light bar and one is for the
the other. So th what we're gonna be doing is if you come right around here, you're gonna notice I have my switch panel right here, which all the electric, all the lighting goes connected to this, which uh, this is way better than actually having to use your uh, stock harness that I told you guys, like from any company, because then you have to run uh, relays, you have to run more wiring, you have to run switches. With the power of this, you just need one straight wire that goes from the light to this and this has built-in fuses as you can tell and uh, the relay and everything like that and then your switch panel uh, button will be inside the cab with just one wire which will work for a bunch so i'll show you guys when we go inside the cab but i just wanted to explain that so like i said these are the two uh, harness wirings so you're going to notice all along the the switch panel here there's going to be a bunch of lighting that i already have connected previously uh, don't mind the mess here i'm going to end up switching out this switch panel for a newer one so make Make sure to stay tuned for that video that one's gonna look so much cleaner but as far as what I have right now uh, you're gonna notice all along the way the way I know how to wire it is you're gonna see there's a plus and a minus plus and a minus plus and a minus and it goes all along the way so of course plus would be positive which is red and then minus would be uh, negative which is you know the black so popping this open we're gonna start working right here with this 30 amp fuse I'm gonna go ahead and connect probably the one that pulls the most current which which is going to be the yellow ones since there's more of them that's where i'm going to be connecting it so i'll connect the red there and then the black for those that are curious this is a switch panel here which controls all my lighting what i was telling you guys why i like this is as you can tell there's only one wire coming into the cab and it controls all the light bars and you don't need those uh, long wires anymore or relays anything like that so i'm going to go ahead and turn this bad boy on all you do is uh, push it and then i'll show you guys how it looks on the outside so there it is as you can tell right now i do have everything lit up but like i was telling you is the reason i did the two harnesses is because now if i wanted to i could go ahead and turn off my whites and leave just the yellows or vice versa uh, right now at night i'll go ahead and show you guys just so you guys get a better picture how bright these things are but just look at them looking at them dead on from here i know you guys can't see it on the camera but looking at them dead on uh, it's pretty blinding so of course as you guys can tell it's nighttime now so we're going to be showing you guys how the light bar looks at night right now i do have my headlights turned on unfortunately i can't turn them off separately from the light bar so the headlights are going to have to stay on but the cool thing about this you guys will be able to see how much brighter uh, the light bar is because my headlights are bright so you're going to see how much brighter it's going to be uh, so just looking at that there you can see the widespread so let's go ahead and now get started and show you guys so we're going to go ahead and start off with one of them and that one right there is going to be the combo so as you guys can tell it's so much brighter and in person it actually goes widespread as well so it's pretty far out uh, but my thing is uh, when you're inside the cab it lights up this so much better uh, without just the headlights this is so much better so right now what we're going to do is now we're going to go ahead and turn on the spots so as you guys can tell that one is way further out cool thing about that one it's like a straight beam so that one will help me out when i'm going super fast and i'm trying to see what's further out and then of course the other white ones those are going to help me out right here in the center kind of acting as like better headlights for me so i can see what's in right in front of me so right now let's go ahead and uh, do one by one so let's do it once again so like i had said those are going to be the combos let's turn those off now and then now let's turn on the next ones and those are the spots so uh, one thing i did want to tell you guys before someone points it out it is crazy far but one thing you might notice they are slightly slanted reason why is i still have to adjust them if you guys do remember uh all of these are independently installed so it's not like a full-on light bar it's actually a bunch of pods so i need to adjust them just so that way the beam is pointed a little bit more in the center and nice and straight so right now once again let's turn on both of them all right so as you guys can tell crazy crazy bright so now let's go ahead and turn off all of it and there you guys go so that's just headlights so i hope that kind of gives you guys a better perspective of course if you guys do ever see this in person it's a big difference than what you see on the camera but it's actually pretty pretty bright so if you do want to go ahead and buy it check out the description box below there's also discount codes there if you guys want to buy them if you guys did like today's video please make sure to like comment and subscribe we'll see you guys on the next one peace Feel free to subscribe